Hypatia was born around 355 AD in Alexandria, Egypt. Scholars don't know the exact date of her birth, but agree that she was born between 350 AD and 370 AD. She was the daughter of Theon, who taught math at the University of Alexandria in Egypt. During the time that Hypatia lived in Alexandria, Egypt, the city was one of the greatest places to learn in the world. There is no doubt that this contributed to Hypatia's success during her life. During her childhood, Hypatia was taught math, astronomy, and philosophy by her father. Theon didn't believe in raising his daughter in the traditional world of the time, so he raised her as he would a son, by teaching Hypatia his trade. This is when her love for math and sciences started to develop. By the time Hypatia was approximately 20 years old, she was a professor of philosophy, science, and mathematics at the University of Alexandria, where she worked with her father. She led a respective life at the university and gained respect from her male colleagues. She was the first woman to work at the university. Accounts tell us how Hypatia surpassed her respected father with her brilliance. At the university, Hypatia taught her students about astronomy, geometry, and the writings of Plato and Aristotle. The Christian historian Socrates of Constantinople, a contemporary of Hypatia, describes her in his ecclesiastical history. There was a woman at Alexandria named Hypatia, daughter of the philosopher Theon, who made such attainments in literature and science as to far surpass all of the philosophers of her own time. Having succeeded to the school of Plato and Plotinus, she explained the principles of philosophy to her own auditors, many of whom came from a distance to receive her instructions. On account of the self-possession and ease of manner which she had acquired in consequence of the cultivation of her mind, she not infrequently appeared in public in the presence of magistrate. Neither did she feel abashed in going to an assembly of men, for all men on account of her extraordinary dignity and virtue admired her the more. In addition to being an astounding teacher and speaker, Hypatia also made advancements in the math world. She edited the works of On the Conics of Apollonius. This book was about dividing cones into different parts by using a plane. Her work on this important book made the concepts that were taught easier to understand. There is no doubt that this helped the work survive many generations. Hypatia also continued writing and commenting on Ptolemy's Almagest and Handy Tables, which was something that her father, Theon, had been doing also. In addition to writing on math and astronomy, Hypatia also invented the astrolabe for other ship navigation and other devices which calculated the density of fluids and measured the level of water. Hypatia's great inventions and contributions to math and science made her very popular, and she became friends with Orestes, the Roman governor of Egypt. The archbishop in Alexandria, whose name was Cyril, was upset with Hypatia's friendship with Orestes, the Roman governor of Egypt. John of Nicaea gives us an insight of this situation from Cyril's point of view. And in those days, there appeared in Alexandria a female philosopher, a pagan named Hypatia, and she was devoted at all times to magic, astrolabes, and instruments of music. And she beguiled many people through her satanic wiles. And the governor of the city honored her exceedingly, for she had beguiled him through her magic. And he ceased attending church, as had been his custom. Tensions increased when Orestes had a man named Hyrax punished for spying on the Jewish community. This enraged Cyril, who had employed the spy, and in turn, he encouraged the death of all Jews. In the frenzy and hysteria that was created in the mob who were slaughtering Jews, the mob went in search of Hephaestia to kill her, since she was a friend of Orestes and a devout pagan. The mob found Hephaestia on her way home and attacked her. She was pulled down from her carriage, dragged to a nearby church, and beaten to death. After she died, the mob tore her limbs from her and burned her body. The year was 415 AD. Hypatia's death came as a shock to people all over the world. She began to become seen by many as a martyr for philosophy. Her many contributions to math and inventions made her known as the first woman mathematician. Thank you for watching this video about Hypatia and the story of her life. I hope that you learned a lot and found Hypatia's story as interesting as I did.
If you want to learn more details about her life, make sure to check the description as I will be putting my sources down there. Thanks again and I hope to see you in the next video.